So what's up? How we doing today? We're going to take a look at some more signature looks from Jerry Garcia. But you already know that because you clicked on this video and I'm assuming you read what it was. We're going to take a look at Brown Eyed Women and the solo from Europe 72. The whole solo is short and sweet. And then we're going to do just one time through of Cornell from 77. It's a little bit longer, but just going to do one time through to compare the two. There's of course some similarities underneath it, but there's also some differences. So we're going to look at what those are. But first, let's give Europe 72 a listen and then we're going to break down what it is. And later we'll check out the Cornell version. So first off, this is one that really follows the vocal melody, and I'll put a link in the description down below to my vocal melody for guitar of this one, and I'll put it at the uh, end screen at the end of this video too. So if you want to check that out afterwards, check it out there, because if you want the foundation for soloing on this song, whether it's the slow Europe version or the faster Cornell, you got to know the melody. It's all about the melody. I mean, this is almost the same thing for what I wrote out for the melody, just a little extra notes here and there, and it's leading into it. So it's getting this C sharp minor, but we're in actually the key of E, right? So even though we're starting in C sharp minor, it's really overall, it keeps coming back to that E, and it's actually E major, not E mixolydian like most dead songs and revolving around a mixolydian mode. This is actually an E major, but a lot of it focuses on just the pentatonic. So the E major pentatonic, or in this for this chord, this measure, C sharp minor pentatonic, because those are relative and they're actually the same exact notes. So we've got just chromatically leading right up to that C sharp there. And I'm not going to go over every single note here because there's a lot of notes, especially in the Cornell one, but um, just some key things like that we're leading up to there, right? And then we've got a lot of slides. So it's really slipping around here. And some hammer-ons, pull-offs right there. So it's all just all just that E major pentatonic, the stuff, uh, you know, so far. And then we go up here, we got, it's bending out here, so this is a tricky one to be bending. Make sure you get all three fingers, it's tough to bend down here this low, and get bending up to, yeah, see, I'm a little off myself. So that's one to really work on, uh, talking to myself here, you know, really get that down. So bending up there, so um, giving that really distinct sound, of getting that um, note up to that one. And then it's gonna bring it back up. And then here he's doing this thing that he did, uh, he was only 72 here, but as the years went on, he would do this more and more. The big, you know, three or sometimes four note pull-offs right in a row. And then, so instead of that, he's throwing that one in there. And then this is to me like a thing that he does a lot. Um, sometimes a little kind of like lead rhythmic part of do during songs or little lead licks um, after a verse or something. I can't think of a song right now, but like this is a lot. He does this, this little rhythmic thing and he's kind of doing it right here over the A. And then over that uh, measure of just 2-4 real quick. And then back on the E, releases that. And then a little. So. So a quick little hammer on, hammer on pull off thing. And then, and then repeats that. So that, that's, a, for me, a big takeaway is he starts and ends with the same exact little thing, that chromatic thing, just leading right up to the uh, C sharp, right? And that C sharp minor, so he's recycling stuff. It's not like he's just playing random stuff. He's got an idea, he develops it, he moves around, and it's all revolving around just the vocal melody, and he's got the kind of theme of a lot of, it's very legato, you know, lots of hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides, bends, um, but it's all just around this little area, focusing on the major pentatonic, which the melody is based on, and then finishes up by recycling that idea 
And that's it. And it's a beautiful soul. So let's check out the uh, Cornell version now, and then we'll talk about what's going on with that. <laughs> So some of the similarities that we have with this one is that he does a lot of uh, the same. He's, he's getting into the C sharp, same exact spot right there. And then he ends it also. Um, we'll get to that. It, the same kind of going that same way. So he's got that going. And then underneath it, it's really kind of got that melody going too. But it's a little harder to tell because there's so many notes on uh, this one. And an interesting thing is that it may sound like this is so much faster than the Europe version. I thought it was myself. This is a good lesson that, um, you know, things with music can sometimes be a little bit of an illusion. The tempo, I forget what they exactly are but between the two. The Cornell is definitely faster, but not by as much as you think. It's more that the band has a different feel to it. It sounds more intense, a little digging in a little harder, and Jerry especially is playing a lot more notes. He's playing about twice as many notes, so it's like double, double time to call it, you know, double speed. And uh, that makes it seem, again, there's this illusion that the tempo is actually faster, even though it's it's closer than, than it seems. So the backing track I've got is is more the Europe 72 kind of version. Um, I haven't made a separate one for that, you know, but maybe someday I'll do another one. Um, so let's see, let's we'll look at what's going on here. You're starting off with the uh, flat five, you're just, but it's really, it's really, you know, the blue note there, but it's really just to bend, it's, or to hammer on right to that real quick, just a quick passing tone. So instead of, you know, doing the, you can see it's the same idea. He's just doing it slightly different and just adding a little more notes there. And then talk about recycling from before. He's doing the same thing, just up an octave. Same exact thing, up an octave, re repeating ideas. Uh, it sounds so musical, sounds so nice. And then just doing this little faster stuff. And then we've got on the E chord, the fifth of E right here. There's that quick three in a row, pull off again. And then. This is the type of stuff that if the fingering's tricky for you to really work it out, like I wouldn't go like this, or you could do that, but I don't myself. I like to do this, so move that third finger there. And uh, just kind of works better for, for my hands. And then now we're at the B, little pause there. Little balance, um, rhythmic things. Again, another musical thing. He's got a lot of smooth stuff, you know, so. so. And then you can only do that for so long, and then it gets tiring. So a little pause, and then it hit, hits the B right over the B chord, but just a little, little kind of offbeat, staccato, rhythmic stuff. And another spot with the finger, if you go, it's like, oh, you can do that, but you gotta move this finger real quick over here. It's kind of tricky, so even though I might come down like this or something with this finger, I use my second finger here, so it feels a little weird here, but then over here, much better. So I'm thinking uh, kind of a head here, like playing chess, you know? And then, so the opposite here, because then I, I don't want this as awkward, so. So sliding back here, I switch it to this finger here, slide it back down. And then C sharp minor, here we got, stressing that, that E, which is uh, now the minor third of C sharp minor. And back to the, up to here, so kind of repeating this little spot right here a lot. And then over here on the E, the one bend on this one. So the other one had more bends. This one's got more, just more notes and more bluegrass kind of sound and a little more jazzy and and some more hammer and pull off. I mean, it's, yeah, hammer and pull offs, but not bends as much. So. so just just right around that E major pentatonic stuff again, and then we got over the A. We got there it is again. That three in a row. But then there it is again, going to that E. 
it gets a little rhythmic, so. So he does the same thing he did in Europe 72. This is five years later, same measure, same spot. He's doing that same stuff, but he's adding onto it, you know, as his playing kind of evolved and his, his taste and stuff changed. And then going backwards, so doing that there, and now going the measure two, four. Now we're back to the E. Doing the same thing there. That works great. Over the A, he's hitting the E. So it's the fifth of A. Now it's on E, so it's the root, obviously, of E, right? E of E. And, uh, and then, and then just a quick little thing. And then finishing with that same thing again. And then, and it kind of goes up, and then it goes up higher. I really was tempted to keep going with this, but um, I've already done too much. You know, the idea of these signature licks things, I originally wanted to just be doing like, you know, three or so kind of key licks from a solo and um, and really just focusing on, you know, musically what's going on. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I can't I can't help but doing these longer solos. But I thought this was a good one because the Europe 72 is, is so short and sweet. And then just to do a snippet of this to compare the two again, because there's such great versions and you can really see the differences of different time periods and how Jerry evolved and kind of played some more notes and did a little more fancy stuff as, uh, you know, as time went on. But the main thing here is to really, with both of these, I mean, just in general, is to really work on the timing. And that's something I didn't really talk about much here. Um, you know, just doing out of the context of playing along with the track, it's harder to do that because you need something a little, little, a little bit more of a reference um, to kind of be holding that beat down. But that's really the hardest thing. I mean, I actually don't feel that great about what I just played for the Cornell Europe 72 was okay, but the Cornell, I really struggled with um, getting the timing if you wanted to really get it just right. But if you've seen my videos before, I'm not into always copying things and doing it verbatim. I think it's great to do that. You know, it's a little bit of my attempt with this series um, so that you can kind of get used to hearing something that you are already hear and then matching up to the guitar and so you know how to make those sounds that you hopefully like, if like, if you like these, these solos and stuff. But in the end, you know, don't worry about it. Just do your own thing. But remember that the rhythm is like a huge part of that timing. It's a very, very tricky thing, and it's a hard thing to just write down um, music. I don't have it written down at all. Right? We're just looking at just the numbers, so just take a blank tab there. So focus on the timing. Listen to the track. Listen to the original version to really get that down. And if you've got time, check out the uh, vocal melody for guitar version for this or the practice backing track if you want to try it out yourself. And I'll see you in the next video.